my name is Nathan Nicholas with McNaught McKay Electric Company. I'm the engineering supervisor for the Drive Motion Mechanical team in Southeast Michigan. Hi, my name is Mark Zessen. I'm with Rockwell Automation out of our Detroit, Michigan sales office. I'm a solution architect here covering our integrated architecture products. Hi, I'm Jeff Hampton. I'm the power and control area manager here in the Detroit sales office for Rockwell Automation. Today we're going to update you on some advanced safety functions that were released in the latest version of Rockwell's Drive and Motion product family. There's been a lot of improvements in the way safety is implemented in drives in motion today. If you take a look at this slide, this is kind of an older architecture where we use safety relays, hardwired inputs, contactors between the drive and the motor, or potentially contactors ahead of the drive. Um, as we all know, there were definitely issues with that. While it did provide a safe system, there were some negative impacts that could occur if a contactor was opened at the wrong time or a contactor cycled on and off very quickly. You can damage drives and motors. With some of the newer safe torque off functionality built into drives, you still had some hardwired inputs, but it definitely was a much cleaner system. You're now basically just disabling the output circuits of the drives in a safe manner. And then you're also able to then cascade multiple drives together to achieve safe torque off capability in drives through hardwired with just one input. The same thing can be said for the PowerFlex 5.2X family of, of drives. If you take a look at how safety is implemented in the 523, you basically had contactors again between the drive and the motor, and then depending on whether you wanted CAT3 or CAT4, you may have had one or two contactors between the drives and the motors. The 525 came out. It had hardwired safe torque off, so that functionality eliminated the need for the contactors, um, allowed you to uh, run a safety input to the drive to put the drive in safe torque off mode. And then now with the advent of the 527, that's all done over the Ethernet network, so there's no need for the safety relays and the hardware into the drive. It's all done in the safety PLC through the manipulation of tags as to whether the drive goes into safe torque off mode or not. So from an architecture standpoint, the elimination of the contactors, the safety relays, and all the hard wiring that's associated with it definitely cleans up our architecture and makes our, uh, our layout much cleaner, also much more flexible. So you're using safety I.O., whether that be some type of point guard I.O. or armor point uh, safety I.O., whatever that might happen to be. You're wiring safety devices into safety I.O. They are monitored over the Ethernet network, and then commands are sent down to the drive over that same Ethernet network. So what actually happens when a safety message needs to be sent from a safety PLC down to a safety drive? The way that you achieve higher performance levels for your safety system is through duality, diagnostics, and diversity. So if you take a look at uh, what that typically happens when a message is sent from a safety PLC over to a drive, basically you would have two controllers in a, in a SIL3 application. You'd have the standard guard logics controller and then its safety partner. Basically, each one of those scans safety code independently. They would then package up a message where you have data A coming from the safety controller, and then data B would come from the safety partner. That gets packaged up into one message. So your duality is basically you're sending the same information twice. You're getting diversity in that the information from processor B, the safety partner, is inverted from the data in processor A, so it's diverse. There are checksums associated with this. This all gets packaged up into a message, gets sent down over to the drive, and at the drive level, there are two separate processors, one looking at data A, the other looking at data B. They basically solve their logic, look to see what the output state should be. They then compare that information. If they match, the drive goes into safe torque off mode or run mode, depending on what the drive was being told to do. If the messages happen to differ, or there's an issue with the checksums or the message somehow gets corrupted, the drive would then fault and go to the safe state. So just to do a little deeper dive on the individual safety functions, we have the traditional safe torque off built into the drive. So basically disabling the output of the drive. If the drive is moving, then it would probably coast to a stop. If it was stopped, of course, then you would just transition right into safe torque off mode. You can do a safe stop one, which is a controlled stop. So you program in some type of decel rate, bring the drive to a controlled stop, and then once you reach a zero speed, you would turn off the drive and then typically go into safe torque off mode. Another function is the safe brake control. Safe brake control is used to control a third party safety brake. Typically it's not used to control the motor brake. It would be an external device mounted to maintain a vertical axis typically 
in the raised position and not allow it to drop as the servo is disabled. A couple of other safety functions that revolve around stopping would be a safe stop to function. A safe stop to function would be where you bring the drive to a controlled stop and then you leave the drive enabled after you bring the axis to a stop. So a safe stop one is a ramp to a stop and turn the drive off. A safe stop two is a ramp to a stop and then you leave the drive enabled. The difference though is again, not only that you're leaving the drive enabled, but typically at the end of a safe stop two, you would transition into something called a safe operating stop where you're doing zero speed monitoring or zero position change monitoring. Some additional monitoring functions that are also available with the, the new drives is safe limited speed. So this may be an application where an operator may need to go inside of a guard to do a cleaning function or clear a jam or some type of activity along those lines where they still may need to have the servo enabled and be able to move the servo or jog the servo but at a, at a very slow speed determined by your risk assessment. So it allows the operator to enter the area safely be able to move the axis or move the servo, but at a reduced speed while monitoring that speed. And if you exceed whatever that speed limitation is, then you would fault the drive and put it into a safe state. It could also be safe direction. So maybe an operator needs to go in, like in a cleaning functionality, think of a couple of uh, rotating rolls, and maybe the rolls would only rotate in a direction that would push the operator away from the rolls as opposed to pull the operator in. So you could actually move the axes, but only in a certain direction. If you try to go in a certain direction, the other direction I should say, then the axis would fault. And then there's the safe limited position functionality where you can say the drive has to stay within a certain window and if it goes outside that window, basically the drive would again fault and then you would typically go to a safe torque off type of state. There are multiple drives that support these various functions. So there are Kinetics 5500 drives and Kinetics 5700 drives. From a kinetic standpoint, the 5700 drives are the only ones that currently support these advanced safety functions. They're in the ERS-4 version of the drive. So when you order the drive at the end of the catalog number, you would have an ERS-4 in the part string to say, I want advanced safety. If you only need safe torque off, the catalog number would end in an ERS-3. The Kinetics 5500 drive has basically only the safe torque off capability and there are two physically different drives depending on whether you wanted hardwired safety or network based safety. So a catalog number that ends in an ERS drive in the 5500 would only do hardwired safety. An ERS2 drive or ERS2 is at the end of the catalog number would support the, uh, the network based safety. And then from a PowerFlex 755 standpoint there are multiple safety cards that go into the uh, 755. So there's an S card that is a hardwired safe torque off card. There is an S1 card, which gives you hardwired safe torque off or hardwired safe limited speed. There's an S3 card that gives you hardwired safe torque off or network based safe torque off. And then the newest card that we're uh, gonna be talking about today is the S4 card, um, which gives you that uh, hardwired safe torque off network-based safe torque off, and also these advanced safety functions uh, uh, in the 755 drive. There are a couple of caveats with that though. You do need to use an L8 safety controller, whether that's the compact logics or the full-blown guard logics controller with version 31 or higher of Studio 5000. And then you also would need, in the PowerFlex's case, you would need to use firmware version 14 for the, for the drives. So earlier we talked about a risk assessment and the outcome of a risk assessment being a performance level that you would need to design your safety function to, to meet or, or achieve. To do that would require certain hardware. So this slide shows a typical example of what a PLD solution might look like. So it uses, in this case, a Compact Guard Logics SIL2 controller. It uses the Kinetics 5700 ERS4 drive and then to achieve the safety functionality, we need to add in some type of safety feedback. If you look at the VPL or VPC motor, that would require a SIL2 PLD encoder, which is an option when you order the motor. You would select the safety feedback device for that particular motor in the catalog number string. Or if you're gonna be using one of our more traditional MPL or MPM motors, basically all you would need in that case is to use the standard Stegman hyperface feedback. So an MPL or MPM motor with Stegman hyperface, a VPL or VPC motor with the SIL rated encoder would be used to achieve a SIL2 performance level D function. 
So the previous slide looked at a compact guard logic solution. So currently the only available guard logic controller in the compact family is a SIL2 controller or a PLD controller. The guard logic controllers, uh, the more traditional chassis based controllers, there is a SIL2 PLD version available or a SIL3 PLE version. You achieve that by basically adding in the safety partner in the chassis. So if all you needed to achieve based on the outcome of your risk assessment is SIL2 PLD, you would simply use the L8 version of the guard logic controller. If you need SIL3 PLE based on your risk assessment, you would add in the safety partner. Either way, the functions are going to uh, be pretty much the same. From a hardware standpoint, though, to achieve SIL3 PLE, we would need to add in a secondary feedback device. To do that, we would need to use the second port on the front of the ERS-4 Kinetics 5700 drive. So as the architecture shows here, you would use a VPL motor with the SIL2 rated feedback device, same as you did with the PLD solution, but now you're going to add in a secondary feedback device. Typically the one we recommend is the 842HR encoder, which is a Stegman Hyperface high-res encoder. On this slide, labeled SIL2 PLD or SIL3 PLE solutions, we're showing two network safety card options for the 755. The 20-750-S3 network safety card can be utilized by GuardLogic's version 30 or higher to accomplish network-based safe torque off. If you would like to use advanced safety, utilizing the LA processor with V31 or higher, with a single encoder on the 755, you can obtain SIL2 PLD ratings with both an incremental encoder or an absolute encoder, uh, such as a six Stegman hyperface, uh, MPL servo motor, or a SSI sine cosine. If you require SIL3 PLE rating for the 755 advanced safety card, you must use a dual encoder and they must be different. The two options available are, are a universal feedback card wired to a sine cosine type of encoder along with an incremental encoder card both wired to the universal feedback card or utilizing two incremental encoder feedbacks wired to the dual incremental encoder feedback card. This slide is just a blow up of the previous slide labeled SIL2 PLD or SIL3 PLD or the 755 with appropriate encoder feedback either one or two encoders wired into the unit can be utilized in the SIL2 PLD or SIL3 PLE solution. Next, we will go and do a live demo where we have set up here a PowerFlex 755 motor with a hyperface sine cosine encoder with the advanced safety card. We have a Kinetics 5700 with VPL motor and we have a GuardLogix L8 processor required for advanced safety and then utilizing uh, the MAB gate box to be able to show how you could utilize advanced safety specifically for a few applications. We're now going to do a live demonstration of using safely limited speed in conjunction with safe brake control to provide access to a cell while an axis is still in motion and still be safe for the operator. So the first thing we're going to do is enable our servo. Once the servo is enabled, we're then going to request access to the cell. This is done through the use of a selector switch on this demo, but this could be in the form of a push button as well. You can see now that the motor has slowed down to a, a speed that was below the safety threshold defined by our safety risk assessment. I'm now going to hold down the live man on the pendant. And you'll see that we're granted access to the cell. The gate is unlocked and I'm able to enter the cell freely I can perform my, my functions while I'm still holding down the live man pendant. When I'm done, I close the gate, release the live man, and you can see that we're still monitoring the safe speed threshold. I'm going to turn off the request and reset. And now you can see the axis has gone back to normal operating speed. So I'm going to walk through the same procedure, except this time with the gate open, I'm going to release the live man and we'll see what happens. So I'm gonna make the request for safe speed monitoring or to enter the cell. I'm gonna hold down the live man. The gate unlocks, I'm able to open it. I walk into the cell and now I'm gonna release the live man. You can hear our brake contactor pull in. 
So through the use of the safe brake control, we've now engaged our brake. So if I need to reset this, I can close the gate. I turn off safe speed monitoring and I reset the system. I'm now able to get the system back up and operational again by enabling the servos. We're now going to show a live demonstration of using uh, Safe Stop 2 in conjunction with the Safe Operating Stop in which we're going to monitor for a zero speed condition. So I'm going to first enable the servo. And now I'm going to issue a Safe Stop 2 through the use of an e-stop, which is going to produce a controlled stop and monitor the speed on the ramp down and then transition into a safe operating stop in which we are going to be monitoring for that zero speed condition. You can see that the axis came to a stop and at which point the drive is still enabled and the drive is enabling and monitoring a zero speed condition. We're now going to issue a command outside of the speed range, uh, which is safe for the safe operating stop and you'll see that the drive will fault. So now that the drive is faulted, the brake has set and we're in a safe condition. For more information or for more videos like this, please visit our website, download our app, or subscribe to our YouTube channel.